All right, <laughs> Krista, we're connected. Oh, yes. <laughs> awesome. Let me just shut off our little background music and uh, and make sure you feel our I saw that it is working on my end for Instagram. How is it looking on your end? Look. I'm crossing my fingers. You know, this technology is just crazy that we can be connected this way and <laughs> test everything out. So for those of you who are just joining, we will be starting at one o'clock or so. And we're just testing out our technology because because it's out to get us sometimes, I think. <laughs> well, I think I am live on Instagram and um, I have it muted over there. So um, <laughs> we won't hear here and there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mine didn't even have sound on it. So I was thinking, all right, that is um, fortunate. <laughs> so, all right. This is a modern technology miracle. I, we've been doing lives for maybe two or three years on and off, and it just really does keep getting better and better. And today marks a record for how many places we are streaming to, which it, it looks like it's seven places. Exciting. <laughs> you know, and so important because um, people are really, you know, at risk of losing memories and, uh, for those of you who are joining us, there should be a chat or a comments area. And we're really excited you're learning a little bit about how to save your photos today and take action today. That's like our a huge concern is uh, people wait too long and sometimes it, it can be too late. For sure. Being proactive. That, <laughs> that's my mantra. Be proactive. Mm -hmm. So if you're joining, uh, feel free to say hi in the chat or comments or whatever the little dialogue box is. Chat and say hi. Tell us where you're from. It's always interesting to see where uh, people are. We're we're in the Midwest here at Pixology in Wisconsin, and I'm suspecting you have some nicer weather down by you. It's like a, a July day in Wisconsin here today. <laughs> it is gorgeous Florida weather. I'm down here in Florida, and it is that great time of year when um, the weather, it's not too hot yet. Um, <laughs> perfectly nice. The sun is out. So yeah, I, I hate to rub it in, but you guys are headed for some nice weather. We had 78 yesterday, Ooh. so it was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, Trish is also from Florida. Do you know where Port St. Joe yeah. is? Yeah. Right. Yeah. She says it's warm there as well. And we have Nikia watching from Tennessee, which is awesome. So that's cool. And uh, we, we actually are... Um, we have, Trish has had a, a similar, uh, another experience as well as having survived Hurricane Michael in 2018. Was, um, was that, were you impacted by that hurricane as well? I think we spoke about this, didn't we? Michael was, that didn't hit our area as hard. Hurricane Ian was the last um, hurricane okay. that really did the most damage in, mm -hmm. in my lifetime. Here. Sure, sure. Well, I, um, I'm glad, Trish, that you're here and Nakia and anyone else, if you're just joining, you can drop a, a comment, let us know where you're from and we're thrilled to have you. If you're watching later, don't hesitate to uh, also throw it in the comments because we'll see that as well. So Krista, I I think it's, it's 102 and we could probably get started. I like to keep things on track and we just, are so lucky to have found each other. You are an angel. <laughs> um, and I think people really need some motivation for saving their pictures. So before I hit the um, PowerPoint presentation, you see, I'm dated. <laughs> I, I, love slides, but that's I, I love it. All right. We have to say hi to a couple more people. Anne is from Scotland oh. and it's chilly there. And are you visiting Scotland or do you live there? You have to let us know. That's that's really cool. 
And then we have Sybil uh, from Mississippi. So another Southern state that I'm sure has um, felt these impacts from hurricanes and other tropical storms. All right, let me get the slide here joining uh, our, pre our program. And um, Anne does live in Scotland. So that is officially, the, you're the first person that I've had join on a live from Scotland. Welcome. <laughs> All right. We are here today to talk about helping photos weather the storm. Truly, uh, there are so many things that can steal our memories from us. And not only do we need to weather the storm, we need to protect our memories. Because um, I often say, uh, Bob Dylan once saying, you, you really need to take care of all your memories because you can't relive them. And uh, both Krista and I are passionate about helping helping people do this, um, save their memories and you know bringing awareness. And I can't emphasize it enough. Disaster technology and time are waiting to steal your memories away. Many of you probably have experienced some sort of photo loss already. So I put these pictures up here and <laughs> Pixology, we are a place in, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where we help organize and preserve people's photos. We do the work for our clients. And we've been doing this for 11 years. And for a long time, I hesitated saying, you could lose your pictures in a tornado or a fire could happen. And um, I didn't want to use the scary words. <laughs> and I think Krista might have educated me on this because literally tomorrow can be too late. I have uh, spoken with people out in California who have had um, uh, the wildfires hit. And one gal told me she lost her home. She's like, we didn't even have 30 seconds to get out of the house. That's enough time to get your kids and your pets maybe out. There's There was no photos saved from her her fire. And it's just uh, such a insult to the tragedy that's already happened when you, you lose your pictures. So I really feel strongly about um, this. And now I'm going to just start telling people, today's the day to do something. Do it yourself or hire someone. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. <yes. laughs> and <Absolutely. laughs> I'm sharing these next photos uh, because these are photos from Krista's experience to go ahead and tell us a little bit about you and you know what we're looking at here. Sure, sure. Um, so I am a lifelong photographer and photo lover. I've loved photography my whole life. Um, I've been a professional photographer on my own wedding and family portrait business for 25 years, but it wasn't until Hurricane Ian um, just devastated my area that I got into trying to help people to proactively secure their pictures. Um, after Hurricane Ian, um, Blood water came through, storm surge came through and just destroyed thousands of homes. And um, I just, I saw the devastation this caused. So just uh, days after the storm, I started helping people to try to salvage their photos. I used the, what I learned in, in photo school and what I knew from photography to just try to salvage those pictures. But the biggest takeaway I, I really had from that experience was that um, it all could have been prevented. And everyone had, had they just gotten a digital copy of those photographs beforehand, it, that heartache could have been prevented and the same with the wildfires and the tornadoes and so many other things. So um, that's just, I, I think where I just found myself on this mission, I just wanna make sure everybody has the tools and they meet people like you, amazing, amazing people who can help them to get those photos proactively secured, digitized, backed up, make sure they are safe. So if they have to leave their home, in 30 seconds, their photos aren't the thing they're thinking of when, when they're running out the door. So true, so true. And Krista has been featured on national uh, news television reports for her work. So she's, um, I didn't mention that, but I think it's fair to call her. She went door to door helping people figure out what to do with their pictures, save what they can. And she dried 
and dried and dried many photos on her dining room table, right? <laughs> Every flat surface in my house, actually. <laughs> I took over my house. God bless my husband. He didn't say a word, but I think it was months before we all ate at the dining room table again. But yeah, mm -hmm. I just took over our house. I, I saw the heartache it caused and I just thought I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that we save as many pictures as we can from this situation. Mm -hmm. So you guys are going to want to check out the links a little later. I am going to put links in for uh, Krista's contact information as well as for her news page so that you can see some of those reports. It's just really um, heart wrenching as well as heartwarming, you know, to see the the work that that you did with your team. So cool. All right, let's see what we've got here. Okay. <laughs> In case you didn't know what pictures look like after being soaked. <laughs> it's, not this, pretty. it's not pretty. It's not pretty. No, no. So don't wait until it's too late, please. Um, like some of those pictures, there is nothing that can be done to, to recover them. So, And that's the one thing, I, you know, I was featured on a lot of news stations for the work I was doing to help save pictures. But what doesn't really get talked about is a lot of them couldn't be saved. And a lot of the conversations I was having um, with people were to discuss the fact that, no, I can't do anything to save this photograph. So, um, you know, that's, that's the, the, hard truth of it really mm -hmm. yeah yeah i um it causes you to you know to pause um it's hard to tell people hard to tell people that the, it's gone oh yeah that's i had so many people say to me it was their most difficult loss or the most painful thing they lost and we're talking about people that lost everything their entire homes in in many situations um after hurricane ian um, thousands of homes were just washed away and, and gone. And they would, they lost, you know, the couch, they lost the pillows, they lost the record collection, but they didn't mention those things to me. I would have people that would come to my house in tears talking about their photographs. That was, and they would say it was the most painful loss. So. Mm -hmm. Well, that is what we're here for today is to prevent this from happening again. So we will, um, we will, tell you how to protect your photos and what to do when the storm does hit. Before I go into that, I did have a couple more people chime in. Amruth is here from India. Hello again. Good to see you. International group today. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Leanne's here Hello, Fort Myers in yeah. South Carolina right now. Definitely. Awesome. All right. And for anyone else who's joined in, if you want to let us know where you are, I'll I'll put you on screen in a little bit. But for now, we're going to talk about how to protect your photos. And we have a few tips. Um, the first thing you need to know is that your physical photos are at risk. You can package them up in any sort of bin, um, box, have them higher or lower something could get to them, whether, you know, it's a flood, you know, in the basement, or it's a fire, or a tornado in the Midwest, they're, they're at risk, all right? So we have to think about how to back them up. And, and the best way to do that is to make a digital backup or scanning your photo collection. I have um, posted here the Epson Fast Photo 680W scanner. Many of our clients have this. Uh, we have one here at the office. And I think Krista, this is what yeah. you use as well. I do too. Yeah, I, I love this scanner. Mm -hmm. And so pictures with mine, and I think it does a great job. Yeah. And like the well, I was going to say the color correction is really nice, too, on the 70s and 60s photos and things like that. That I was really impressed with when I first got mine. It was better than I expected. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to just type this in the chat, Epson Fast Photo um, 680, so that you can look this up. Now, scanning photos isn't um, just something <laughs> that you get done in a day if you have lots of them. Um, but you can do this yourself or you can hire someone to do it. At Pixology here, we try to help people like figure out 
in preserving their memories, what they can do themselves and what they might want to hire out for. So I do have a, um, a QR code and a, it links to our roadmap to saving family memories. And I will also just put this link in the, the um, chat area as well. And, um, and you can see that, but get it done. All right. And, and I have to tell you, like, we've been in business for a long time and we have people who have contacted us six, seven, eight years ago, and sometimes they're getting around to it. Um, you just can't wait. When you look at the power of um, nature and time and what technology can fail, um, you just want to start working on this as soon as possible. Absolutely. Yeah. So once everything's scanned, no matter who does it, you're going to want to back up your files to an external hard drive. And uh, if you add new pictures, you know, to your collection, you're going to want to back those up as well. So you'll have that that physical backup in your house. Then you want to have a backup outside of your house. We we actually teach here that um, you have a backup in your house and a backup outside of your house. And uh, these days, having a cloud backup service is pretty acceptable. Back when we first started, people were like leery of cloud storage, but there's quite a few options out there. So uh, we recommend using Forever. It's designed to hold your family memories and it's easy to share and do more with your pictures. But you could be using Amazon Photos, Google Photos or iCloud, Dropbox is out there. Some backup to um, a cloud service is, is fantastic so that you have that outside of the house. Because like in a fire, you could you might not have time to grab your external hard drives um i know that some people it's a good idea to have a fireproof um safe and you could store the external hard drive there anyway one copy inside the house and one copy outside of the house <laughs> If you know a storm is coming, you you have some time to prepare. Um, but I, I know Chris is going to share her two cents worth on this. Um, I have seen you know that you could bag your photos up, use a sharpie marker, you know, write on the write on it with duct tape, things like that. Um, other things that you can do is you know, keep your photos away from the windows and doors prevent them from being exposed to water or high winds and marking your photos. I don't know if any of that would have helped the situation in the photo. <laughs> I my, my thought on that, I hate to give anybody a false sense of security as this being a good option to secure your pictures if there is, you know, there is a storm coming or potential flooding. Um, I, I think in my scenario where storm surge was the main issue that that came through and destroyed pictures there were some 5000 homes that were just destroyed those those houses are they don't know where their refrigerator is let alone that plastic bag with pictures so i um i would really hesitate to tell people that's a good option i think the only safe method is to be proactive and start this week and start getting digital copies of all of your pictures so you know that they're on that cloud, that they're stored on Amazon Photos or forever or you know Dropbox, whatever you select, you know they're there. So if you do have to run, you might not be able to take your computer or your hard drive, uh, but you know the pictures are there. I, I personally, and I will say regarding the storm surge that happened after the hurricane or during the hurricane, I, even I, I live here in Southwest Florida, been through hurricanes before. I don't think I completely understood what a storm surge was. I literally thought the water would rise and then go out. Um, but it's more like being placed in the middle of the ocean. That water came in with force and it went back out with force. And it just, it just destroyed things. Even it just things fell apart. It really, I, I don't know if any plastic bag would stand up to no matter how good you sealed it. I just don't think that. In, in many situations that would have made it through. Um, so that's that's my only concern with, with telling somebody there's methods to actually save the pictures. The only, in my opinion, the only way your pictures are safe is if you have a digital copy of them. 
I I'm schooled. <laughs> I am schooled. Um, you know, over the years, uh, we have helped people more with fires here. And um, and I've seen, you know, the tornado impact, um, but I've never heard someone describe the storm surge like that. So, so these slides are in there, um, but we're going to go with what Krista says. <laughs> Definitely get them preserved because um, you, you, hindsight's, you know, 2020 and it just get it done. And, and it doesn't have to be perfect. So, all right. <laughs> um, let's have you, Krista, talk about saving photos after disaster hits. Okay. Uh, you lived it. So, um, uh, go ahead and I'll just uh, kind of cycle along. If you need me to actually move a slide forward, let me know and I'll do that for you. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, so yeah, talking in terms of flood damage. So um, like I said, some pictures, some people just lost, like literally their photographs were lost and gone forever. Um, but of the photographs that we were able to save, the biggest thing was would be, and I would tell anybody to act fast, uh, mold sets in within 24 hours. I, it's quick. I, I'm not sure the exact time frame, but it is very fast. And it is gross mold that will start growing on anything that has gotten wet. So whether it's um, a flooded basement or storm surge, like what I went through, mm -hmm. immediately you need to take those pictures and start getting them dried. So if they're in photo albums, I would suggest get them out of those photo albums right away. Even take scissors and cut apart the albums, which we did in some cases to get those photos out. Um, if they're in picture frames, things that were in your home in a picture frame, same thing. You need to immediately get them out of the picture frame and then find a good flat service where you can put them out to dry, put out newspaper, put the, the pictures across on the newspaper so they are laying out and they are drying. Um, and one thing I think a lot of people didn't realize um, after the storm as I was trying to save these pictures Photographs go through water as a part of the process of developing them. So they are, in essence, waterproof. They can go through a certain amount of water. So um, that's okay. Um, and, and even actually, I'll step back a second. Throughout the process, as I was helping people, I would wash the pictures off. I'd rinse them off if they had any mud or any debris stuck to them. It is okay if you have clean water um, to rinse a photo in clean water. Most photographs I did, uh, we did come across some, if you have very old photos printed on tin or glass, like we're talking like 1800, like late old, old pictures, you might want to um, actually, I would 100% say get a professional involved, somebody that does archiving and that if you have photographs that date back that far. But speaking in terms of most of the photographs I saw, things from the 70s and 80s, even you know 90s, those photographs can be rinsed off typically. Um, then you're going to sit them out to dry and make sure they dry. And you might find, and in my case, a lot of pictures I was able to save for pictures required nothing further than that. They just needed to be dried, washed, dried, flattened out. Like Then they were good to be you know, they were, they were okay to, to give back to the owner. I also personally, when I went through this process, got digital copies of all of the pictures for everybody too. So um, they did have that digital copy. In the case of ones that have damage, water spots, um, things of that nature, um, a lot of them, you would be surprised what, even I'm surprised at what digital retouchers can do now. And um, after the hurricane, I reached out to professional photographers, retouchers from all over the country. And just, I did a couple of posts on Facebook and just asked people, Hey, you know, can you help if I send you a digital copy of a water damaged photograph, can you digitally restore it? And um, I had so many people volunteer to help and they did an amazing job. And I will say, even I, even I was mind blown by some of the, the stuff that they, they were able to do to restore photographs. So don't, um, you know, if, if you have a water damaged photograph, get it dried right away as best you can. And if it has spots, don't feel it like this one is a good example. Um, you know, I, I had a lot of people tell me they threw out photographs that looked like this. They said, you know, that photo was ruined. I threw it out. And I, I would say even if um, that's something, the digital restoration, that can be done later. That doesn't have to be done right away. Just the drying does. But then six months later, or even I do occasionally, I'm sure you do too, have people reach out who have photographs they've held on to for a year or many years that have water damage. You can still have this restored. So, Yeah. And I, I just want to go backwards. Um, 
this is an example of um, one of the fire recovery situations that we had. We had a manila envelope for each album. And uh, I don't know if you can see it on the right picture, this blue album. There were six pictures that just needed scanning. Uh, 56 that we identified just needed to be cropped. Like even the example that you had, it could have been cropped pretty close, getting to the meat, you know, the, the family part of it, and, and it would have been okay. Then in that album, we had 24 that were scan and restore that would have needed the restoration work like you had um, in the, your example. And then we had six to eight of them that were unsavable. So uh the like you pointed out drying them out is the um the key and these all these envelopes were of pictures dried out they they were um originally stored uh in a locker in july in in wisconsin um and they they were in the fire and they were soaked from the water to put the fire out. And the company that collected all of the albums just threw everything in a laundry basket and put it in that locker for three weeks. So these pictures, while they're in the envelopes, um, we had to store them uh, airtight because they, they had mold for sure. So um the interesting <laughs> working with some of that outside or having masks is important too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I did a lot of the initial work I did was outside, um, mm -hmm. gloves on and um, took the pictures outside first and washed them outside mm -hmm. before I brought them into the house, even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, just amazing. Yeah, that this photo is saved and the restorer did a great job. It, it is amazing what can be done. <laughs> man who restored this is a hobbyist. He's a just a hobby photoshopper in Texas. And he reached out to me and asked if he could help. And I sent him this along with dozens of others. And he did an amazing job. But wow. I even I had a woman um, in California who does professional um, retouching for magazine shoots. Um, so that's her full time job. I had a classroom full of students in Connecticut. So I, I had um, a lot of different people that did some impressive work for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you had angels helping you. <laughs> That's great. Let's look at the, the next one here. Um, well, this one's, yeah, I mean, this is history here. <laughs> I love how he even put the bowling pin back. If you look on the, the damaged photo, the bowling pin is just gone. And <laughs> when he restored this, he put the, the bowling pin back in. I thought, what a brilliant what a brilliant job he did. Yeah, you would really not know. Um, sometimes the photo restoration gets a little fake looking and this looks fantastic. So, yeah. so um, let's see the next one. Oh, yeah, look at that. Um, I believe this was three generations. It was a really special photograph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that those multi-generational pictures are so important. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you show a picture like this to the current children, the little kids in the family, and they can see where they fit in the whole family tree of things, it's so good for the, the you know, the younger generations to see this and find some connection with it. And, Without the pictures, it's pretty hard to to show that. Absolutely, the woman in so the the child in this photo is the woman whose home was flooded, and um, she's the person that I had helped. Um, but she now just had a grandbaby a couple months ago, her first grandbaby. So now this goes. This is five generations of people when you include her son and her son's baby. So I mean, yeah, this is really this is their heritage. This is a very important photo. So I was glad that that it was able to be restored. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask you, <laughs> this is just a screenshot from one of the interviews um, that you did. Tell us about this lady and what, what you did for her. 
This is Lori. I love Lori. She is just the sweetest person you will ever meet. Um, she actually lives in Cape Coral, Florida. So it's a town here near me. Um, her home is a duplex. It's a it's um, split in half and it's half hers and half her elderly mother lives in the other half. Um, so unfortunately, um, when their home flooded, it took many generations of photographs because it was both you know, her mother's pictures and her pictures. And she is this, this one was heartbreaking. They really didn't have a ton of water in their home um, compared to some people. Their home had maybe two feet of water. It wasn't as much as, as many, some, some people had, I think it's like 15 to 20 feet. There was a lot of water that came through, but there's just had a little bit, but right before they evacuated for the storm, her mother took all of the photographs and put them down low. Because in past here in storms in Southwest Florida, the wind would be so bad that people's roofs would blow off. So that's the damage people were concerned about. So she took all of her photos out of the high places and put them down on the ground in case there's any roof damage and they had water coming in from the roof. Um, so when they returned to see the damage in their home, they found all of the photo albums had been destroyed. So that um, was their situation. And um, her son actually reached out to me and asked if there was any, he had found me on Facebook and saw what I was doing and just asked if there's anything that I could do to help. So I um, met with her, started with her husband and just took a ton of photographs from them and just got to work. And we were able to save quite a few. And then um, the Kelly Clarkson show reached out and asked us both to come on where um, I got to reveal some of the, um, our favorites that were restored. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that was a really, a really good uh, interview. And um, fun experience. Yeah. Her and I, Lori and I did not know each other. This is Lori here. Um, we didn't know each other before this, and we were asked to fly to Los Angeles together. And so we flew together. We had many great dinners and some cocktails, and just had a great time. So we spent um, three days in LA for the taping of this show, and it really was um, just such a huge blessing. It was such a, a really nice time and um, a great experience for sure. And for her to have something positive out of all of that, um, that was really oh, cool. Absolutely. And actually, at the end of the show, Kelly Clarkson surprised both Lori and I with um, a free trip to Park City, Utah. So that's right. Yeah, yeah. And I have a trip at the end of this month. So just um, it's sneaking up and Lori's, uh, Lori's going on too. And um, I just, you know, so it is just nice at, at the end of all of this, obviously, a trip to Park City Utah doesn't make up for what she has been through, but um, mm -hmm. it's just, it was a fun experience and a nice, nice set. <laughs> wow. And, and, and says what a wonderful story because it, it really is. Well, um, I don't know about those of you who are watching, hopefully you're feeling some motivation and, you know, we want to, you know, I like to, and I know Krista feels the same way. Like we want to positively motivate you. You know, this isn't about scaring you to death. <laughs> so the motivation comes with, you know, help and resources. Um, so I have a, a couple resources here to share. And if you have any questions, drop them in the chat or the comments and we're happy to answer them. So uh, I'll get to those if there are any in a, in a second. This is our contact information, and I'm going to also paste this in the um, the chat. You probably saw that, maybe you didn't, but in the chat also, I'll put it in there again, are the interviews that, that Krista did. There's at least three of them, and they're really awesome. So you can check that out. Uh, I also... Oh, you know, I, it's so funny. I thought I had a picture. This is the one I'm looking for. Um, at Pixology, early on, we met a gal named Kathy Stone, who's from Calgary, and they had massive flooding um, years ago. I don't remember the exact time of it, but Kathy Stone it was instrumental in helping us help people with water damaged and soaked photos. So I have um, the QR code for you to go there as well as um, I'm gonna put uh, her link in here. This, she's got like 30 points. Um, and maybe some of this is, uh, you know, for after 
the storm hits and you need to figure out, but she's really thorough about it. And I wanted to just mention um, her resources there. So let's see. Um, I think that was that was what we wanted to cover, Krista. Did we miss anything? <laughs> I don't think so. I really, I'm just so glad um, you invited me to chat with you. I think this is just wonderful. I um, love what you do. And, you know, talking about resources, you are a fabulous resource. You have taught me so much already just um, chatting with you and uh, getting to know what you know. I, I feel like you are just the person everybody needs to know. So, um, and anyone out there who is struggling with um, getting their photos digitized, or if you're one of those people that has been putting off the project, and I do talk to so many people that are like, oh, I've, this has been on the to-do list for five years or whatever the case may be. Maybe it's time to reach out to Molly <laughs> and get some help with that project. I, I've i had people tell me that they'd rather scrub toilets. Um, you know, one one of um one of our clients early on you know she came we used to have people work here at our offices on their pictures um and we ended that when the pandemic hit um but we would have these um people working here they'd bring their bins and their tubs and they'd rent a table for a few hours and sometimes they'd pay for us to sit with them and work with them yeah. And, you know, um, uh, Mary would say, I had to take a Xanax before I came today. <laughs> People are slacking with my volume. Yeah. It's no joke. Like, the, the photos are so overwhelming. And um, over the years, we have found that sometimes, well, we're so much faster at doing the work when we just do it. Um, because we're not as attached. We're not attached. And um, I'm I, I'm hoping that um, you know maybe pe more people will consider just turning it over because we can take you know a lot of bins and boxes and in four to six weeks have it organized, curated, scanned, and available to look at um, on your phone. So oh gosh, yeah, how great is that? Mm -hmm. I do tell people when they're doing the project themselves to schedule in time to reminisce, schedule in time to look at those those photos. And, and I say all the time, it's not like cleaning the garage. It's just not. And I think people start the project thinking this is going to be a, a to-do task like cleaning the garage. We're going to just do it and be done. But it's not like it's an emotional project. And, and there are even, I would say, even the happiest memories like there's something that can be a little sad about that. So if you take that in, you're like, well, that, that time is gone or that person isn't with us any longer. It could have been a great birthday party from 1990, but if grandma's not with us any longer or whatever, I think it, it really is. Um, it's a hard project. So I can see how you guys taking it on would make, would make it quicker. <laughs> I, I, I experienced that very thing yesterday. My sister thinks that, um, well, she, photos have not been important to her so much. And, you know, I hear that a lot. It's like, well, will anybody really care? And I, I always say, do it for yourself first, because if you're expecting your family to be cheering you on, that might not happen. <laughs> and my, and my sister was one of them. You know, I've been saving photos, you know, our family photos for a long time. And so uh, she finally said, all right, I think I get it. But I bet you can, um, you know, I'm going to challenge you and you're going to be stuck. You won't find a photo. So I'm on this 365 day challenge to find a photo every day. And yesterday um, she actually wanted a video and that she didn't know about, like I was supposed to surprise her. So I sent her a video, never, it was of a family reunion from like 1986. There's very little video of me and my sister in the eighties, Yeah, very, very little. Um, and I thought it'd be cool, but she's like, oh my gosh, Aunt Carol was in there and oh. grandma. And you know, to, yeah. to hear that again was, um, you know, emotional for her. And, and then me, because I forgot about those who are gone. And, yeah. um, you know, that's, I don't know how I got on that subject, except that. Um, yeah, I do think, though, when 
Pixology takes your pictures, it can be a quicker process because mm -hmm. that emotion isn't attached to the photos the way we are to our own personal pictures. So I can definitely see that. But mm -hmm. yeah, there, there's so much emotion with photographs. There really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um, I just, you know, I, if I could send a little note out to everybody, you just starts with something and schedule that time and um, and know that there's resources and that you're not alone. You know, Krista, you had explained to me a little bit about who, you know, is following you and looking to you for um, motivation and advice. And it, we're really similar in that you are not alone. The tech, the tech problems that you have, everybody has. And it's not just, you know, the older generations, I see it in 20 year olds and 30 year olds. It's, it's, it's really not you at all. It's the technology went so fast, none of us could keep up with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think people become afraid, afraid to ask questions. So I, I love, that's what I loved about finding, seeing your YouTube videos that you offer a very um, safe and comfortable space to um, ask questions and, and for people to have as a great resource. So I, I just really connected with you on that. <laughs> Thank you, Krista. <laughs> and here's, here's a, um, like a, just a, common thing um the trouble is photo organization let's just categorize it all in five words right <laughs> um trish i would recommend that um you check out the roadmap there are some tips because how you approach organizing digital pictures is different than the print pictures although there's some you know common themes in it um and i I also see that you do have a photo that um, is damaged, that's sentimental, and you want to have advice on how to send off to have that be restored and digitized. Do you have a go-to place that you're recommending, Krista, for people to um, have photo restoration done? Um, you know, I do not. Um, one woman that I was recommending has just recently gone out of business, so she's not doing it any longer. Mm -hmm. uh, and then most of the people that I've worked with have been volunteers who've helped me. I think there's some great um, just resources online. I think there's tons of mm -hmm. um, photo um, retouchers. Also, I think, um, you know, like Upwork or those different, you know, services like that yep. and put in photo retouchers. I, I think they're a dime a dozen anymore. Um, mm -hmm. People that can do some amazing things, especially with AI technology and the things mm -hmm. that are available to people anymore. It's not like it was 10 and 20 years ago that you had to search long and hard to find somebody. Mm -hmm. um, it would be easy to find somebody. Um, in terms of getting that digital picture first before um, sending it off, um, like I said, I, I love the Epson Fast Photo, um, but for something simple, if it's for one photo, one photograph, photo mine, the app mm -hmm. on your phone is it. it will do a good enough job to get mm -hmm. the digital copy that you can send to somebody. But mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Um, photo mine actually has a photo restore feature on it and a colorization feature on it. So they've gotten pretty right. advanced. Yeah. Um, we also do photo restoration here too. So I put our website up there. Um, it's not our main work, but um, I it's like the most searched thing in Google is photo restoration, not photo yeah. organization, but. Okay. Um, well, that's good to know. So yeah. they could just send you a physical print and you could start. To, oh, that's what a great resource that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, I think, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think that's what Trish needs to do. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. I didn't want to do that. Although Trish, thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. You get the award for having the only question so far. <laughs> um, and, and if you guys think of questions later or people are watching this later, you can put the question in and we'll definitely respond to it. Okay. How about we wrap up, Krista? Um, what's uh, what's your like uh, action plan for people? What should they take from today? And what's your last piece of advice for them? Um, oh, gosh. So I think just the main thing for me is just that the pictures, you need to have a digital copy of photographs. You can, every print photograph from from pictures of, of ancestors going way back to pictures from the 90s, it, it does all of those photographs. It's not difficult to get a digital copy, but it's an imperative 
that you do. I think it's the only way that a photograph is truly safe mm -hmm. is to have that digital copy. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I'm going to put it up here. I just typed it while you were talking. <laughs> All right. Well, then um, I think we are going to wrap up our our live stream for today. But Krista, I would love to chat with you again sometime. I think um, <laughs> it's been really fun. Yeah, so. for sure. So uh, let's just see um, one last comment here from Anne. Thank you. It's very interesting. So much great advice. Awesome. <laughs> And uh, you tell all your Scottish college <laughs> friends and family, too. <laughs> all right. Then I am going to wrap up and I'm going to end the stream. Thank you all for joining us. Krista, thank you for sharing your expertise. And we will see you guys again. <laughs> Bye.